You brought some oil and gas stocks for us. But before we get to that, uh, I sat down with the Saudi energy minister last week in Vienna, Austria. 17-minute interview, by the way. It's all up on CNBC.com. Check it out. And he basically said that they decided to cut because they're worried about the Fed, central banks, and a major economic slowdown. People can believe that or not, but that's what he said on the record. Do you believe that? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, you know, wh when you put the, the math uh, and, and look at it, uh, people are rightly concerned about economic growth. Uh, if the world economy deteriorates, that might take half a million to a million barrels a day of demand down. Um, but if you look at the outlook, there are so many much larger issues that would outweigh that. So uh, starting with the SPR release, that's about a million barrels a day that would go the other way. Russia potentially is a million to two million barrels a day. China uh, coming out of COVID lockdowns uh, might be another million to two million barrels a day. So I would be less concerned about uh, the global economy and more concerned with supply in the short run. Um, I think that that's the real danger. Okay. Uh, because the IMF, so, the IMF was out today warning about a major global slowdown. That would seem to kind of play into what the Saudi energy minister was, was talking about, that if we have a slowdown, how much could demand get hit? And they were basically trying to get out in front of it. Yeah, I mean, that, that makes sense. I mean, demand could come off. But the, so again, the supply issues are so much bigger uh, that I think it significantly outweighs that. Going into the OPEC meeting, we felt that the market was balanced at roughly 100 million barrels a day of supply and demand. Um, maybe half a million to a million comes off, but you could have significantly larger uh, amounts of supply coming off. So we think that the cut was uh, tightens the market even more. But the bigger issue, Brian, is longer term. Yeah. Uh, oil and gas, it's a depleting business. Uh, the world is not spending enough money to maintain that capacity. Uh, producers don't have the confidence in the long run. So we think that demand comes back. It continues to grow over the long term, and we just might not have enough supply. Yeah. I mean, this is you're hitting on such a critical story, Stan, because trillions of dollars coming out because people are talking about the energy transition. But there's absolutely no indication that the use of oil and or gas is going to go down any time in the, next, in the next decade. I mean, that seems like you're headed for a pricing train wreck that, to, the, to the upside, to the upside. Exactly. People are pretending like we're not going to use do. oil in the next five years. No, no. Oil use is going to go up in the next 10 years. That's not me. That's the IEA, EIA, any other acronym you want to throw out there. Brian, coal demand is still growing. Coal, so coal demand I, has never I, been higher any time in human history. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I think it's... Uh, you know, we're fairly comfortable with the assumption that oil demand will grow. The issue, as you as you mentioned, is that suppliers are not spending enough money to meet that demand. And, and that's where it gets critical. And there's nothing you can do in the short run uh, when oil projects, the majority of them, you need five to 10 years of planning and, and very few people are doing that. 